Welcome back to the World Archery Championships here in Copenhagen when we're about to get ready for the Compound Men's 148th Elimination Round. I'm George Tekmachov, and with me right now, Steve the Big Cat Anderson. As we're about to get back underway with more action from the field here in Copenhagen, Steve, things are looking better out there weather-wise. Yeah, it's kind of laid down a little bit for these guys. They have a, a tailwind on them now. Um, it's not totally dead, but it's uh, probably the best conditions they've seen the whole time, so they're going to think of it as totally dead. Before we really get started, I, I just want to thank my good friend Marcus Anir for his good wishes. Did you see what he said? Yeah, Marcus Anir wrote, GT's commentating, meaning George Tekmachov, don't get fired, GT. Yeah, well, you can't fire a volunteer. No, shout out to you, though, Marcus. Yep. Thanks, Marcus, I think. All right, we're going to have a great match, I think, coming up. It's going to be Stefan Hansen, the local favorite, the Fresh Prince of Denmark, and he's going to be up against the archer from Egypt. And, by the way, these Egyptian guys have been getting better and better with every uh, with every tournament. They, I've been seeing them show up at the uh, World Cup events. Uh, excuse me, at the... Asian Grand Prix event. So Khaled El Said is going to be taking on young Stefan Hansen. Yeah, and these guys actually spent some time in Salt Lake at the Eastern Salt Lake Archery yeah. Center training with uh, D. Wild and learning some stuff from the Hoyt and Eastern crews there. So they're obviously taking the steps they need to try to better their compound team. Yeah, they were there for better part of 10 days from what I heard. Yeah, they, uh, they forewent the Antalya World Cup yeah, and yeah. Uh, stayed in Salt Lake to, to train. We'll see I if guess, that pays off. Yeah, team. Uh, some teams have done something like that. You know, they they uh, place less importance on World Cup events in order to try to train for this event here. Yeah, well, let's face it. I mean, Khaled has his work cut out for him because he's up against Stefan Hansen. Khaled is ranked 100th in this event. Yeah. And Stefan's 13th. Stefan's at 13th, uh, but one of the most talented shooters in the world personable too he's a good kid yeah and uh he's had a lot of big stage experience uh this might be the first time khaled is on camera um, stefan has been just this year alone in a number of finals also was uh, second place at the indoor world cup final in las vegas to mike schlosser um, so he's although young very experienced for his age. Well, Khaled's got nothing to lose. Uh, Stefan's got the home crowd to try to keep happy by making it into the finals, so there's more pressure on Steve. Yeah, I, I suppose he's got some pressure on him. Um, I think for him, he's a, a very process-driven shooter. I think he'll go out and just try to work form. And, One shot at a time? Yeah, he's going to he's gonna try to work on execution and, and technique and, and make that happen. Uh, a guy like Stefan probably approaches these early rounds thinking, all right, I don't have to necessarily try to win the match. I need to try to make my shooting the best it can be. He's, he's treating this probably as... Uh, sort of advanced practice. Yeah, preparation. Yeah. I mean, a guy's trying to And that's no disrespect intended to his opponent, but... No, no, it's just that uh, the, the odds are definitely in Stefan's favor. And, and if he does go out and, and treat it like... Uh, preparation, he's probably going to shoot a great score. I mean, that's obviously what a guy should try to do is just shoot their shot, shoot their technique, not worry about the opponent. You had a chance to get out on the field of play and feel what's going on out there with the wind. We're looking at it right now. What do you think, Steve? Is it a hold off at all, or are you just going to shoot this thing dead on, go for a good solid shot? I'm probably going to start straight up, and if I miss, it's not going to be a whole lot right or left if you make a great shot. Um, There's just not in, enough wind out there. Yeah, in a wind like this, I'm probably just going to side in for it. I'm just going to move the sight clouds have slowed down greatly they were scudding along i mean clouds that are miles away when they look like they're moving really really fast relative to the trees you know the wind is ripping and right now things have calmed down a bit yeah it's uh finally starting to give them some more shootable conditions uh, if i was predicting the score for this match i could see Stefan coming in around the 147 mark. first shot for blood is a 10x for stephen hansen and it's a nine for khaled el said of egypt Okay, Mr. Hansen with a nine just out. Nine. Stefan with a one point lead. And there's a, uh, looks like a nine from here. Yeah, he's just out at two o'clock there. Yeah. 
Uh, Stefan looking really relaxed, shooting a hinge I'm noticing right now. Uh, Mr. Khaled shooting a button. So I'm going to get you to explain that because uh, while you and I know what hinges and buttons are, maybe quite a few people who are tuning in don't. And as we say that, George, the rain has just started to come down pretty heavily again. sure has. So my goodness. It's straight down, though, at least, because yeah. there's no wind. As we mentioned yesterday, you wait 10 minutes and the weather will change. In, yep. the, in the matter of one end, less than two minutes, the weather had, did a... A full on three, uh, 180 on us. So, yeah. so Stefan Hansen with a two point lead right now. What's a hinge? What's a button? Maybe so explain that. These compound shooters are using a mechanical release aid. Uh, Stefan, as I mentioned, using a hinge. So, hinge, re hinge operates off of rotation. He's not triggering that release. It's what you'd call a back tension release. Yeah, a lot of people refer to it as that. Um, it basically has a hook and moon, and as the, the release rotates, as the shooter pulls through that release and, and gets the release to rotate from. The pressure bring on his index, his pointer finger, out towards his ring finger. That rotation will cause the, the hook to clear the moon, opening up the release and firing the arrow. Uh, Mr. Khaled is using a thumb button, so he's actually activating the release either with his thumb, which is less than ideal when you're actually commanding the release. Generally, shooters don't have as much success doing that. Or he's using it to pull through as he increases the tension uh, and that tension travels to his thumb, it breaks over on the sear and, and fires it, much like a trigger of any other uh, gun or firearm or any other weapon that is more traditionally shot. Okay, so that, that raises an interesting question. Earlier today, I introduced you to somebody who was a top Olympic uh, rifle competitor for China, and she wants to shoot a compound bow. And she automatically believes that because she was a rifle shooter that she needs to shoot an index finger trigger type release. And I got the impression you didn't think that was such a hot idea. No, I mean, these are two totally different games. We've seen people have good success commanding the release. Uh, Dietmar, Dietmar Trillis. Dietmar, uh, Christina Heigenhauser, who was a... Jorge. Yeah, Jorge Jimenez, Jimenez who we may see later. Um, we've, we've had some shooters that have had great success commanding the release, but by and large, the people who attempt to do that tend to go through mental issues that really cause them serious aiming problems and usually run them out of the sport pretty quickly. Issues that shall not be mentioned, but uh, I would suggest that that's it's a wired thing, right? I mean, it's the way the brain works. Yeah, and with, uh, with a gun or any other type of firearm, you're aiming and, and squeezing or pulling a trigger. With a bow, you're also dealing with the fact that it has, on a compound bow, about 20 pounds of resistance you're holding. So you're not just holding the weight of the bow up, you're, you're also holding the tension of the bow, which wants to pull back against you. I think that's maybe where the differences come. I don't, I don't know for sure, but um, well, the truth is, some rifle shooters get a case of the yips the same way. Yeah, and I certainly have never competed with rifle shooting. It's something I've done here and there, but I don't shoot a, a bow or, or a rifle yeah. the same way. It's I have, I have shot rifle for many years, uh, competition rifle for many years, and I can tell you, I'm very thankful I've never had this issue, but I sure see it a lot. Yeah, and it drives them out of the sport too. Yeah, a lot of, a lot of shooters who deal with an anticipation issue um, where a lot of times you'll see a, a shooter hold though they, they, they'll tell you I'm aiming at six o'clock and I, I can't get the bow to move and they'll they'll look for issues maybe it's the bow they take stabilizer weight off the front put it to the back but it's really not it's nothing more than a mental block that's preventing them from comfortably aiming in the center of the target yeah and it it does it ruins you and uh, it can be impossible to come back from well, for the sake of the uh, archers listening in, we're done talking about that. Yeah. Uh, you can bring the children back into the room now. Okay, so let's uh, focus on more comfortable things like yeah, shooting tents. Yeah, I like that idea. Now, tell me about um, whether you think hook shooters versus trigger shooters are going to have an advantage out here because of the wind, specifically. Yeah, and this wind, I mean, if you're a really strong trigger shooter, you shoot a button and you that's all you do primarily, this can... This can really help you, um, although I think if you're doing it properly, it almost doesn't matter. You, you learn to subconsciously activate the release regardless of what type you're using. And it's done off of what your mind is seeing through your eyes, and it's done off of feel of, of, oftentimes. In the wind, you know, you have to kind of change your thought process to, okay, I want, I want to see my dot just left of, of the middle to compensate for the wind as I fire my shot. And some shooters try to do that, and you know they might gravitate towards aiming in the middle because that's what we always do. 
and you know, struggle to hold off for the win. Um, but if you're shooting a, a button or a, a hinge properly, I, I think it's uh, sixes out here, really. As uh, Stefan pulls out a two-point advantage over Khaled, Adam Ravencroft of uh, GBR is enjoying a one-point lead over his opponent, Kevin Burry of Switzerland. Kim Taeyun of Korea with a two-point lead. Stravos, Stavros Kumertas of Greece has a one-point lead over Julio Fierro of Mexico. Julio is a great shooter. Pat Larson, the big Viking from Denmark, has a perfect score, 20 points on the board against Luigi Dragoni of Italy. Yeah, Dragoni is a shooter I've uh, shot against a couple times. Um, I'm also seeing... The Wolfman, Alex Wiffler, with a perfect third. Alex Wolfgang Wiffler. You know, he's going to regret that World Archery puts your middle name on the uh, on the results list. You know yes. that, right? Never again will I call him Alex or had, Wiffler. It's only Wolfman. Yes, because I had no idea his middle name was Wolfgang. No. How many kids do you know with a name like Wolfgang? And he likes it, uh, which he, is cool. Yeah, actually. he comes from a family. His mom told me that his father wanted to name him Wolfgang for his first name. And she said, absolutely not. Settled on the middle name. Uh, but here it is. It's it's uh, shown its head now, and he will forever be known as Wolfman. Which is not a bad thing. I think he actually enjoys it. No, it's which cool. Is great. It's a cool name. Yeah, and, it, and it's an animal nickname. Yeah, so it fits the uh, it fits the world archery pattern of uh, things like the honey badger, the wolverine, the big cat, and now the wolf man. I'm going to roll with it. All right. I like it. All right. It's approved. Victor Kalashnikov, AK-47. Victor has a two-point lead over the great stone-faced Dominique Genet. Yeah, Dominique uh, had some great results earlier this year. He was the highest seeding French member, uh, and they shot uncharacteristically low. They, they failed to make the team cut. Okay. Um, it looks like we're already getting ready to update scores one more time. My good friend Roberto Hernandez of El Salvador has a tie at 29-all against... Athanasios Kostopoulos of Greece. And uh, good thing you've got some Greek heritage in you there, George, because that one would have been a mouthful for me. Thank goodness my mother is from Crete. Should be noted, Roberto was actually the best man at my wedding. No kidding? Yeah. I didn't know that. Mm -hmm. That's awesome. He's a great guy. He's awesome. just a fun guy. I And for everyone listening, I want to point out that Roberto cannot beat me in FIFA on the PlayStation 4. <laughs> now it's watch, pure dominance. Watch what happens next. That's because he's spending his time practicing archery instead of playing PlayStation. Yeah, I, that's why I'm just an alternate. Ruben Blandall of... Yeah, that's right. He's out there shooting. Right. Yeah. We're, you're here talking. Yeah. Have you thought about the correlation? Yeah, the correlation. Uh, U.S. men's compound team can be difficult. can be difficult, difficult to make. See, I've got an excuse. I'm a used to could. Right. Yeah. All right. Better to be a used to could than I never did, though. Yes. Yeah. All right. I'm going to stick by those words. <laughs> Vladimir Brada of Czech Republic and Alberto Blazquez of Spain are tied at 28 all. Uh, Domagoj Budin of Croatia has one point lead over Sean Teasdale of New Zealand. Look at that, there's another Wolfgang. Wolfgang. Wolfgang Weiner of Austria. It's actually, yeah, that's great. Wolfgang has a one point lead over Dunkin' Donuts, Dunkin' Busby. Of GBR. That's right. Our friend Duncan is down by one right now. We'll see about updates as the scores are uh, getting uploaded. And uh, Adam Ravenscroft of GBR, three point lead over Kevin Burry of Switzerland. Draw between our friend Robert Dos Santos of Brazil, the former recurve shooter from Brazil, with uh, Kim Taeyun of Korea. Yeah, that's uh, they're they're drawn at 55. So it looks like neither shooter has yet to really find their their form. Um, so. Draw between Julio Fierro of Mexico and Stavros Kumertas of Greece. Yeah, and Julio's had uh, what Julio would probably call a, uh, a poor year. He hasn't had the success he normally has. Hasn't been shooting the score as he normally does. He's I, been a busy man. I'm not sure I would have expected a draw between Luigi Dargoni of Italy and Patrick Larson of Denmark. Yeah, um, looks like Patrick, what do you shoot there? Uh, 27. 30 followed by 27. Yeah. That's not helpful. No, 27 is never going to get you far. Uh, and Dragoni is a shooter who will, he, he won't let you run away with it. He's always going to be around. You, you can't make a whole lot of mistakes. I shot against him in Antalya actually head to head and was fortunate to beat him in a one arrow shoot off. Wolfman's up by two. Wolfman is uh, shooting strong. 
I- I'm not surprised. The man with the most dignified name on the field, Albertus Cornelius of South Africa, has a uh, four-point lead over Vilas Svitas of Lithuania. Leandro Rojas of Venezuela leading by two. Two-point lead for the man with the scariest name on the field, Viktor Kleshnikov, AK-47. 30 on that end. Dominic Genet trailing by two versus Viktor Kalashnikov. One-point lead for Federico Pagnoni of Italy. A draw between Roberto Hernandez of El Salvador and Athanasios Kostopoulos of Greece. Oleg Krasinlokov of uh, Ukraine. One-point lead over Gabriel Badenhorst of RSA. And, uh, Gabriel is a shooter I think could really do a lot here. He's... Uh, Really strong in the wind, always always tough, no matter who he's shooting against. One of my podium picks, one of yours as well, from uh, our earlier discussions, potentially. Yeah, dark horse pick for us. Yes. Mario Cardoso of Mexico and Marcus Laub of Germany. What What's Mario's story? Mario, hard-working shooter. He'll, he'll shoot the wheels off the bow. Um, he was in the uh, bronze medal match in Shanghai against Dominique Chenet. Uh, came away fourth there. Uh, look, he didn't have the greatest qualification here, so he's shooting against uh, Marcus. I believe he's somewhere around an 80th seed, somewhere in there. And uh, Marcus, a pretty good shooter in his uh, right there from Germany. So could be an interesting one for them. And here we go with the rain again. Yeah, I see blue sky off in the distance, and the heavens have opened up again. What's yeah, up with this? You see uh, Stefan there on camera popping the umbrella. And uh, yeah. Probably hoping to be able to remain under that for a minute or so until it lets up again, because that's all it takes. And there there it goes. It's beginning to die already. Wait a minute. It'll change. Yes. Four-point lead for Mikhail Filatov of Russia. One-point lead for Domagoj Budin of Croatia. Six-point lead for Patrick Rue of South Africa, another uh, person that I expect could very well podium. We're looking at a one-point lead for Seb Penneau of France versus Roman Hafelfinger of Switzerland. We've seen Peter Elzingo with a 60 on the board. Oh, the yeah. One of There's two, one of two that I see so far. Three, Robert Timms of Australia. Let's see if there's any more. Daniel Munoz of Colombia. All of those guys with 60s. Victor Oroz of Hungary has a 60. So the world record holder for the feet around 10. The rain is really pouring down. Oh now. my. It is torrential. It's a shame we can't get these guys a little bit of a timeout because this is ugly. That's a 9. And a 10 from Stefan. He's not giving any quarter. No, and I uh, earlier had predicted somewhere around a 147. I think he's down 3 right now. Yeah, yeah he is. So. Uh, and he uh, he shot that last arrow and Stephen, ran off like it was 10, a team 10, round. 10. Maybe he's well motivated. Yeah, let's, let's shoot the arrows and get off. Because that looks like umbrella. a cold rain out there. Khaled has just shot a 9 9. We can't hear ourselves clearly given the amount of rain coming down no, at this moment. The, uh, you know, we're basically in a tent. We're in a, a vinyl type structure and it's very loud with the rain. So we apologize if it seems that we're yelling now. I have a feeling that you can see it on the camera. Uh, in fact, they're going to have to turn on the windshield wipers. What's our clock showing? We are at 50 seconds. Okay, that's enough time to get the shot off. He is getting soaked. Yeah, he uh, he didn't follow suit with Stefan. He didn't shoot him as quick as he could and get out of the way. I'll tell you what, he's hanging in there. But what's going on with his scope right now, you suppose? Yeah. Oh, another nine. This, this is the kind of weather you don't want to have a clarifier on your feet. No, you ideally have some type of an air puffer, an air can on you. Um, so Would you it do any good? Look at this. Well, it'll do good when between ends when your peep is full of water. You can at least clear it. But between shots, you're, you're just hoping that uh, it doesn't fill up or catch a drop of water while you're at full draw. This is tropical. And here again, we had mentioned in our podcast earlier in the week on our Eastern Target Archery podcast um, some of the things you do to prep for rain. And, and I mentioned having two scope lenses and, and trying to get them as close to possible or at least knowing 
if you have to change one, knowing, okay, I need to take three clicks to the right and four clicks up to get it back to zero. And you'd have to change one because maybe you could lose your stuck-on aiming dot, something yeah, like if that. Yeah, if you're using a, a sticker aiming reticle, uh, it's really easy for one of those to slide off and it's without even touching it. Look at this, the sun's about to come out. Yeah, we're about to get blue skies again. And, of course, it's when they're not shooting. Right. As the, soon as the DOS's um, alarm went off there, it's slowed down to a relative trickle. So when they're shooting and they can't wear their umbrellas, they're dry. Right. Or they're not dry, excuse me. They're soaked. That's just awesome. It's been nothing short of the sun is here, out. The sun is freaking out. When 30 seconds ago, you couldn't see across the field. No. I love it. No, we're looking at a, some type of a church building that must be in the distance. Uh, really pretty classic Denmark style on that, that brick building. And yeah. yeah, just uh, look at that. A minute ago, like you, it appeared. You, you couldn't see it. It's amazing. <laughs> Wish you could be here, yep. for those of you who are watching. And big thanks to the field crew. Um, they're handling the cameras for us, making sure they're all wiped down. Yeah, they are awesome. They've got much, much more stylish umbrellas today. Did you notice that? The, uh, the cameras have much more aerodynamic-looking umbrellas. As if they were built for them. Well, no, that's actually... A, I've seen those. That's a commercial umbrella, and it's got a wedge shape to it. They're meant for people, but they've got them on the cameras. They're kind of cool. They're meant for stylish people. Yeah. I think, if I recall correctly... The You'll see a gigantic black hole just underneath the actual numerical nine where the target was obviously a little soggy, and the archer... Had a hard time pulling the arrow out and just created a, a massive hole. But those are ripstop targets, so you can see where the threads actually, actually. It's an entire it's an entire square that's missing from the from the ripstop threads. In right. other words, there's a square of paper between each set of threads. The whole thing is whole missing, like a square gone. has been cut out. Yeah, on a on a standard target, that may very well actually uh, tear a gigantic hole to the point where they'd have to replace the face. And with something like that, it's not in a critical scoring area um, where they would have to make a judgment call. So they should be able to keep the face. The archers could request to have it moved if he if he sees it clearly through his scope. It might distract him seeing a, a large black hole. Um, for me, I'm, I'm picky and, and a pain in the rear, so I'd probably ask him to put a new face up. What do you do if the judge says no? I guess you could go shoot three arrows. Fair enough. Hopefully not in that hole. All right, here comes some score updates. Stefan Hansen now with a six-point lead over Khaled El Said of Egypt. It's a three-point lead for Adam Ravenscroft of GBR. One-point lead for Kim Taeyun of uh, Korea versus Robert Val dos Santos. One-point lead for Stavros Gumertis of Greece versus Julio Fierro. Pat Larson with a four-point lead now, so he's uh, pulled ahead. Pat made the Wolfman with a one-point lead. Albertus Cornelius of South Africa with a six-point lead. Leandro Rojas of Venezuela with a two-point lead. See some really low scores on some of these. Well, uh, you can't blame them with that rain that just no. came through. Victor Kalashnikov, uh, three point lead right now. Ten point lead for Federico Pagnoni of Italy. Yeah, you Looks like his Reginald had an 18. Yeah, gee, I'm, I'm thinking of that's a miss. Yeah, it could be an issue with clarifier. Looks like uh, Athanasios Kostopoulos of Greece. Unfortunately, 13 point deficit now to Roberto Hernandez. He had a 15. That's got to be a miss. Brutal. As well. Whereas. Whereas uh, Roberto had a 28 right up there, only a point less than his previous two ends. So Stefan starts that in with a pretty much extra center 10. Yeah. Stefan has just been on a roll. He's Asai just shooting really well. But yes, indeed. Well, he's dry now. He's feeling better, I'm sure. Right. Well, he's not dry by any means. I'm sure he's soaked to the skin. Stefan with another Stephen, one right Stefan, not the just middle. a 10. It's an X, and it's yeah. touching the previous shot. He's... Uh, got a comfortable lead he's really just going to relax and try to find his yeah. form this is important for a shooter um entering these head-to-head -head matches to be able to to get on the clock 10 10 10 from uh, stefan so to get on the clock and go head to head and just be able to work your shot and, and find that that's that's critical it, it does a lot for you going forward no doubt and you know you called it earlier steve you said that that some shooters are going to treat that as an opportunity to just you know get their feel and i think that's what we're seeing here you know right and we've Meanwhile, George. you know, it's, it's arguably really good practice for his opponent, Mr. El Said. Yeah. Where else are you going to have pressure 
situation like this, except maybe at the final. Yeah, and this is uh, because I mean, it's always know. good to get on camera and deal with that. Even if you catch the loss, it's never a bad thing. It's good experience gained, and it, it's unfortunate, obviously, to to uh, have to go head to head on on camera in your first match at World Championships. But as the the 100 seed against the 13, the odds are stacked against you anyway, so he's, he's taken as much as he can from it. You know, it's interesting some people rise to the occasion. Actually, you'd be on my short list of people that I would expect to rise to the occasion, put on camera, and you'd, you'd actually do better. I try. Um, See, another thing we talked about, George, is, and you and I have had these discussions privately at, at work and just in our daily banter about archery, um, we've mentioned that the top eight shooters get a buy into the uh, round of 32, I believe. Yeah. And it, I guess it's looked at as an advantage. And, and on a day like today, that's fine, where they won't shoot until tomorrow. But I honestly look at, at that at a regular World Cup stage. It means you sit out two matches while your opponent gets warmed up. Not just warmed up, but confident because he's just had two wins. Yeah. And, and sometimes you get, yeah. I mean, I can point to uh, a couple years ago, uh, PJ Deloge qualified number one and Roger Willett qualified number 32. Roger got two good wins right off the bat and then came in and I think he dropped a 150 on PJ and but, PJ's but, done. But let's be fair. Roger is world class, absolute, yeah. huge shooter. And, you know, PJ is a great shooter, but Roger's 32nd place was an anomaly. Yeah, it, it's not, it's not uh, common for him. But we see that probably every World Cup, a, a top shooter who ranks low. And then, uh, and then has a, a face-off with yeah. another good shooter. Yeah, well, early we noticed, on. we noticed a few of those here in the uh, in the brackets yeah. today. You we, know, I mean, we, we could be seeing see a few of those. Yeah, we could be seeing a few of those matches coming up. So, to me, I I don't know how I feel about the protected eight taking the top eight into the round of uh, the, the one sixteen round. It doesn't do anything for them. It doesn't really get them a good number of. Uh, I don't believe it gets them any World Cup final points. I'd rather start from the top and. And have a uh, what what you might call is a a cakewalk match going in, and get some confidence built up. Peter Elzinga is up by five right now. Roman Heifelfinger versus Sebastian Pinot, a Roman of Switzerland, with a four-point lead. Oh, Sebastian had uh, some struggles there in the third end when it got really rainy. He had a 19. Sebastian so. also ranked lower than I would have expected. Yeah, he struggled in the wind. Does it take a little time to get over that? I mean, like days, something like that? Or it do you can. spend some time working indoors, or what I, do you do? You know, our good friend Kevin Wilkie likes to joke that it actually <laughs> forced him into retirement. We had a really, really windy uh, tournament at the Texas shootout. And he said, you know what, that ended my archery career. He said it, you know, being funny, but to a point, he uh, he also said, no, it took me a long time till I was able to comfortably aim and execute again. Yeah, well, you know, I know some shooters, uh, one of them very, very well known, who refuse the idea of trying anything other than their normal back tension release. You know, they will not pick up the button right. in the wind because they say it would take them too long to undo the damage yeah. from switching. And I'm Dave Cousins of, told me that. Well, Dave, yeah, Dave's the other way. Dave shoots a button constantly. Um, it's rare for him to shoot a hinge. If he's shooting a hinge, there's been something go wrong. But, yeah, I mean, Real Wild is, is one of those who doesn't like to, to touch a button. I'm kind of the same way. If I'm shooting a button, it usually means that it's an unaimable day. You're somewhere in the, in the neighborhood of 12 to 15 meter per second wind. You know, plus 30 miles per hour, and and uh, at that point, I'm just hoping to hit the target face did 72 you, times. Did you see what Juan Carlos just did? He brought us candy. He brought chocolate and put it in front of us while we're on the air. It's as if he wants us to suffer. Sound even more foolish. Or suffer. Suffer. He wants us to suffer because we're looking at this lovely candy sitting in front of us. And we can't touch it because I, my personal policy is never to eat when you're on the air. By the way, I hate that when you hear that on the radio. I think that's a Jordan Almond. I could kill those people when they do that. I hate <laughs> it. Yeah, there's some Jordan Almonds in there. Look at that. Well, I think we're going to make that go away so we're not tempted. If we just 
put it behind that MacBook over there. We should be all right. I could put it next to my Japanese manju over here that you enjoyed so much. Right? It was really good. I, I, I did enjoy that. Thank you for watching. One more time. Please put your hands together for Acai of Egypt. Only the finest in snack foods here in Denmark. We've got uh, three shots to go. This is uh, turning into a bit of a blowout here between Stefan Hansen and Khalid El Said of Egypt. Um, 117 for Mr. Hansen out of a possible 120 right now. That's really solid. Yeah, he's going to have, I mean, I think he started with a... 28 29 so he's going to have one of the highest scores on the field at 117 you know what this kid could win this tournament I truly believe he could yeah he's uh he's had the results he's had the qualification scores uh, this year he has yet to actually do much in the elimination rounds at the oh world cups but just killed the spider yeah it's just a matter of time and he's just hammering that thing i mean you know i mean in a positive way i don't mean like Tank getting yeah. on the trigger. I just, I just mean he's he's just hammering that ten ring. Yeah. And ten, ten, ten again. X, X, X. In fact, again. Holy cow, that's really good shooting. So 147 points. Um, not much you can say. I mean, you know, it's unstoppable. Yep. In uh, conditions like this, with that rain, 147 is probably going to win Final almost every match. Final arrow for Khalid El Said is a El liner nine, nine. So uh, that's done. 15 points, and you're looking at a 10-point victory for Stefan Hansen of Denmark. And considering the pressure and considering his experience level and considering everything else, well done to Khaled El Said. Yeah, and I'm I, uh, noticing that this entire fan section, which is uh, Still obviously... Still full, by the way. Yeah, and it's predominantly full of people here from Denmark, obviously cheering from Stefan. But uh, a nice round of applause for Khaled. Yeah, nice gesture. And uh, let's face it, that was not fun for for Khaled. He was just drenched. Yeah, caught in a total downpour for about a minute and I think seconds. he's going to get on the bus, go back to the hotel, and take a long hot shower or something because I, 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 that was that was cold rain. To make it even worse, he got drenched in rain, and now he's just yeah, baking in the sun. Boys. Yeah, that's always a pleasant feeling. Yeah. All right, let's uh, let's see if there's any shoot-offs. There might very well be. I mean, it's possible. We had a lot of close ones uh, going down the rack here. A lot of active targets on this field of play. So forgive us if we're not calling out your favorite uh, combo, but you can follow it live here on the website. There's links down below if you're looking at this on YouTube. You can scroll down a little bit, and you'll find a link directly to the live results. Um, I think our... Our job was described as talk about what's going on, but don't necessarily do play-by-play. -play. So you can get play-by-play -play anywhere, but one reason we're here is to try to share with you what it's like to be here and also some insight. Steve knows all of these shooters, and uh, you know, I'm more of a recurve guy myself. So I'm just here to uh, push buttons. George handles the, push, the, the button pushing extremely well. Well, I don't mean like, you know, pushing a button. <laughs> like in Goodfellas, you know. A, a literal pushing of the recording buttons. No, that, that's a separate deal. Starting to get some scores rolling in. You know, Juan Carlos is manning the, uh, he was on the, on the computer back there, and he was answering some questions. I haven't seen what's rolling in. I, I'm, I'm dying to see what people are saying about this. It, it could be really bad. <laughs> but I can't see it because uh, Juan Carlos has got the computer back there. And uh, I am unable to see the uh, the roll of questions because I use a Mac. And I don't think it works on a Mac. Or it does? It does? But is it only when you're live? So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to talk to our, our our producer and figure out how to get it to work properly on my computer. Uh, but it obviously works properly for a lot of you out there because I've seen some of the comments rolling on. Keep them coming because we appreciate it. And uh, if you have questions, someone will surely let us know. Fire away. Fire away. Well, within reason. <laughs> we'll answer the appropriate ones. Sure. Well, it's archers. They're not going to give us inappropriate nah, questions. Nah, we won't have we'll never much. have, Especially not from... Uh, our friends in Australia. We won't see any inappropriate questions from them. Yeah. Cheers so, to the Aussies. I, I don't, oy, oy. What time is it over Hey, there? we've got a shoot-off. So, uh, 
have a tie of seven between Piero and Kumatas. We've got at least one shoot off. Just check the results here. Oh, and now we've got it pulled up. Oh, hey, we've got the live stream. We can see what's going on. I sure hope I don't regret what I asked for. Please tell me he opened that in a new tab because I had my results in the previous one. So I'm looking here, some, some questions I'm seeing. What did you mean by button? Uh, when I say button, that means the mechanical release aid that an archer uses. It's actually a thumb trigger activated by the thumb. We call it the thumb button or for sh just the button for short. Uh, thanks to Mr. Lee Beaver for that question. Uh, let's see. Uh, Josh Shimitsu says, Juan Carlos, please pass on. GT is doing a great job. I will send the payment to the usual bank account. Thank you. Get someone back home who's handling those positive yeah. comments for you. Ah, 11 p.m. there. In Oz, in Perth. In, in Perth. My, uh, 3.15 in the morning in New Zealand. More comments below. Let's see what that has to say. Well, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to switch screens for a second here. We'll get back to the folks who are asking questions in a moment. I just need to uh, get back to the results. Let's see if I can do that. Yes, here we go. It's, uh, it is Stavros Cumertas of Greece versus Julio Fierro of Mexico, and they're on target number seven. No, nope. yep, target seven. So let's see what happens there. I think they've got that shoot up going on. Yeah, and we're going to be yep. able to see this one up there. There it is. Let's see if I can just pull up the scope of Scosche. We'll have that. Here we go. We're going on the line. I, uh, it's in the wide shot, so that's up on the screen. Greek archers are not renowned for their compound prowess, but it uh, seems like there's a number of them here that are pretty good. That's a it is a liner 10, and there is a 10. It's also a liner, and I think... Probably going to have a measurement? I think it's closer to center for, for the archer from Mexico. Julio I think Fierro it's a victory for right? Julio Fierro. Fuerte for Fierro. We should talk about uh, yesterday, George, when we had the, the interesting team round result with the uh, the three arrow shoot off for those who didn't catch it yesterday uh, we had a match between Italy and I believe it was China or Chi Chinese Taipei mm. one of the two and uh, so in a team round it's three hour shoot off and if it's still tied on points they go to closest arrow to center they measured each team's best arrow they were an equal tie they measured each team's second best arrow, also tied in distance. And then the third arrow for the Italians was, uh, we, we said yesterday it was a half millimeter closer. It was actually a half centimeter. So yeah. the, the Italians took that victory. Yeah, and I don't have the paper here, so I don't know if we misread it or it was just jotted down. But uh, either way, it was enough that it was satisfied. It satisfied the judge. I've been doing this a long time, and I didn't realize until yesterday that that's what they do, that they actually check all three arrows, because it's never come up before. I've only seen it go to the second arrow one time, and that was, uh, I believe, last year in Colombia. And I think it was the Italians against Mexico in the men's compound team match. And uh, we had a couple shooters there stuff one exactly on the cross. They had to go to the second arrow and uh, to determine the winner. And that's the only time I've even seen them go to the second. I've certainly never seen them use the third arrow to determine a winner. Would you believe 10 minutes ago we couldn't see across the field? Just amazing. Oh, what are you going to do? I see the uh, chatters are talking about uh, the situation with Rio Wild. Yeah. I, I really don't want to get into that at all, but I can say that, you know, uh, it's a great lesson to everyone oh. that if a top professional can make a mistake, anybody can double-check your scorecards. Anybody that's been to a World Cup 
World Championship, anything like that, has heard that announcement over and over again. Make sure your 10s are right. Make sure your Xs are right. Double-check your scorecards before you sign and turn them in. Yeah. If at any point he had looked at that number and had recognized that it said it, too, because it was clear, because I've seen it, if he had at any point seen that problem, he could have fixed it before he turned it in. Yeah, and it's it, the one thing it's told me is don't be afraid to offend anyone by asking them to, to correct their penmanship. But there wasn't you know? it wasn't even a penmanship issue yes. in this case. I'm yeah, sorry. Uh, I know I know you and I had some words about this. But, right. We won't go into it too much, but uh, but the twos were twos and the threes were threes, and there was no confusion between them. Right. Now, going forward, I. I so I imagine just, we'll probably see some reform on scorecards and well, you know what? We'll I think I think more. I heard that there was a discussion about well, maybe they should let the coaches go down to help check the scorecard on the last end. I think that's a great idea. I don't have a problem. With yeah, that. the coaches are uh, for the most part all paid to be here, you know, and adding a, a little responsibility to their task but, to help keep their teams but, in the field of play. But, but for here's the, the truth. Here's the truth. Two hundred guys got it right. Three guys got it wrong, by the way, not just one. Right. Yeah, it's a it's a it's a sad deal. Um, it's horrible. I, I think we'll all. I don't think we'll see a whole lot of issues with that going forward. I think people will be more than mindful of it. Okay, we've got another match coming up with uh, Stefan Hansen, and our feature match is actually going to be Stefan, and he's going to be up against Wolfgang Vayner. Got the other Wolfgang here, and we won't call him the Wolfman. We can't have two. No, he'll be. Uh, you know, like the Wolf. The wolf. You know, like in Pulp Fiction, the wolf. Gentlemen, if my help is not required, I'll just go back. <laughs> kind of <thing. laughs> Seen some other interesting matches there. It looks like uh, Javier Badenhorst from South Africa pulled out the win after having a one point deficit going into the last game. Yeah, yeah. He and Mario Cardoso will face off here, and that's. Uh, that could be the most competitive match on the field. Adam Ravenscroft will face uh, Kim Taeyun of Korea. Pat Larson will be facing Julio Fierro. And the Wolfman, Alex Wiffler, will be facing Albertus Cornelius of South Africa. Here, here's another couple things I'm noticing, George. One uh, interesting match between Chris Perkins and uh, Nyal Amas. Both of them pretty heavy hitters. And Chris then, Perkins, a previous world champion. Nyal, the European champion. Yeah, and then what I am noticing here is I did not see P.J. Deloche on that. We looked at the brackets, and it looked like he could have a showdown with Jorge Jimenez, and it's showing a, a different opponent. We've got Pat Coughlin up against Jogven Niklasen of the Faroe Islands. Amir Kazimpur, the famous archer from Iran, will be facing Igor Kardash of Ukraine. 2007 champion of the world, Ditmar Trillis of Canada, will be facing Daryl Wilson of Ireland. Dejan Sitar of Slovenia up against Andres Cardona of Colombia. My buddy Yuta Yamamoto of Japan will be facing Alexander Dambayev of Russian Federation. That will be a strong test for Yuta. So it looks like here PJ Deloche was put out by Sebastian Hamdorf of Germany. So the world number one going out in the first round. That's uh, not something I would have predicted. I wouldn't have either. Although PJ was the lower seed entering this. Yes, he maybe had a rough start. Yeah. Listen, a lot of these guys had, had such a challenge with the wind. I mean, you can't, you can hardly blame them for the, for the circumstances here, you know? Yeah, it's, uh, and, and like we had talked about not long ago, um, when a shooter shoots in a lot of wind, it can really throw them off for a, a long time after. If they don't have time to get in some calm conditions and work out their execution, there can be some serious, uh, serious implications, serious issues that, that they have to deal with. That's why I think you're you're better off sticking to what you do and worrying less about your qualification scores and hoping that you'll still have it when the time counts to to shoot it in uh, eliminations. Interesting thought. Makes sense, Steve. You know, I mean, when you're talking about something that's so critical timing-wise, I can understand why you would really want to make sure that you didn't compromise that. You know? Yeah, I'd rather, like I said, I'd rather give it up and, and shoot a little lower score in qualification because you, no one's ever won a world championship after the first day. Yeah. Um, and then hopefully still have my, my best form with me for the elimination days that, you know, obviously are all that matter. 
qualifications great and all, it's it's cool to, to lay down a, a killer score during that, but it's meaningless. Uh huh. I, we're getting some criticism here. It says the commentators are too informative. I think that's an excuse for us to eat some candy and be quiet for a while. Yeah, maybe we'll give it a, a, a minute or so. Yeah. All right, we're back in action right now, and we have uh, Wolfgang Wiener of Austria and Stefan Hansen of Denmark. Stefan has just shot a string of tens. Uh, I think the last ten arrows that he has released have been in the ten ring. Yeah, he shot 28-29 in his first match and then had uh, three straight tens, so that, that makes ten. And See, I don't look like it, but I can curse. actually remember a few things here and there once in a while. <laughs> the announcer's curse got him there. Naturally. Yeah. Comment curse of the commentator is uh, an acquaintance of mine who used to do MotoGP, he used to call it. And uh, a high eight there. Not yeah. a, that's, a, that's a miss you rarely see with a compound. But here's the deal. This is a, this has got to be the first time this guy has had this kind of pressure. Yeah, he very well could be. Um, you know, it could be. Sometimes guys get under pressure; they tend to creep off the wall, meaning yeah. they're they're not they don't have the bow all the way back against the draw stops. Okay, creep and, off uh, the wall is not the guy trying to look into your daughter's window. What's <laughs> right? So <laughs> explain that. So creeping off the wall on a compound bow, you draw the bow back till it stops, and there's there's draw stops built into your cam system, and uh, if you're creeping off the wall. The wall being the back, the draw stops. It means you're you're not quite all the way back. You're you're just off it. A lot of times, maybe an eighth inch, quarter inch. Who knows? Um, and generally, that can cause high arrows uh, because it, the the shot's not being fired from full let off. So it, it tends to get some some funky stuff, some funky reaction on the arrow, and, and oftentimes ends up high. So so put yourself in the place of the coach right now for, not for Stefan, but for Wolfgang. What are you going to tell your, your, your shooter right now? What are you telling him? Uh, I mean, right now you say, okay, that's out of the bag. You, you just shot 998. Now let's, uh, let's let it go. Forget the score. Forget that first end. And some guys need that. You know, they, they need to get a bad arrow out just so they can relax. And He's got to feel like okay. I just I'm shooting against a guy who's pretty heavily favored in this match. I've got to I've got to shoot basically clean from here on out to even have a chance. Sure. So I guess I guess you tell him, you know, just relax and shoot. And don't worry anymore. You don't you don't tell him necessarily to give up. But sometimes if you tell him to give up, I'm, I'm doing quotations with my fingers here. Yeah, finger finger quotes. Yeah, then they can relax and and just shoot what they need to do and maybe make a match out of it. Who do we fancy for the medals is the question from Jesmin 1966. Who do we fancy for the medals? I presume that the question will be with uh, respect to the compounds. Yeah, on the compounds, which we're watching here. Mike Schlusser. Yeah, I, I see my I have to look at the brackets and see how it all play out. Um, I see Mike in the gold medal match. Forgive that's, me for being obvious, but Mike Schlusser. Yeah, that's a, that's a pretty, it's like... It's like saying a Korean in the research yeah. side. <laughs> yeah, you're right. You know, not quite that. Not quite that foregone conclusion, though, because here's the deal. You mentioned Dimar Emagakli of Turkey. Yeah, I could see him and Mike meeting in the semis, but that's not possible. Yeah, it is. They it they is. would meet in yeah. the semis. Yep, it's possible. Um, so I I could see Mike in the gold. I'll tell you who else. Braden. Martin Damsbo. Martin Damsbo. Martin Damsbo. Yeah, Martin the number is at home, my friend, and he's in fine form. Yeah, he's on top of his section of the bracket. So, uh, Martin. And he's going to be the crowd favorite. Yeah, Martin. It's not, that's that's not a hard one to call and, either. And you know, Stefan Hansen, I'm telling you right now, has the potential. Yeah. If I had to pick, looking at the brackets now, I would say your semifinals are going to look something like. Oh, we're going to go with. Mikey. Mr. Kim from Korea. All right, you give yours. Okay, I'm going to say Mr. Kim from Korea. 
Mr. Schlusser, Mr. Damsbo. Three, two, one. Okay. Right, I'm going to go with. Thoughts. I'm going to go with semifinals, looking like uh, Demir from Turkey shooting against Mikey Schlosser. And then on the other side, looks like uh, I'm going to say Braden Galantine against Martin Damsbo. And they've shot against each other before in some pretty high stakes matches, including a World Cup final gold match. I think I'm going to I'm going to go with my countryman Braden. Because I'll okay. spend more time with him, and chances are we might be rooming together next week. So I'm taking Braden as a pick. Next week being the uh, World Cup in Poland. In Poland, yeah. And Braden's been shooting just incredibly strong. He's in a good say. place in his life right now, isn't he? Yeah, I, I would, I would say, as we would say in in the states, Braden's shooting just stupid right now. Hmm. He had some, uh, he had some arrows. We shot head to head at a, a trials event, and he was actually telling me where he was going to hit on the X ring. He said, oh, I'll shoot this one 9 o'clock X. I'll shoot this one 3 o'clock X. And it was it was pretty impressive. So I'm going to take Braden over Martin to get into the gold match and Mikey over to Mir. And I'll leave it at that. Okay. All right. Well, we'll see how it shakes out because there's no harm, no foul by being wrong or right. No. Um, I don't have a bet placed in Vegas for this. So Three-point difference now in favor of Stefan Hansen down there. Let's yeah, take a look at some of the other scores. Um, just going around the horn here. That's an unusually low set of scores out there. Okay. Um, actually, a couple of these rounds went really well. Look at Domagoc Budin versus Patrick Rue of South Africa. This 30 all. Peter Elzinga has got himself a 30 down there. Rajat Chauhan of India with a 30. Uh, Pat Coughlin, Aussie, 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 with a 30 for Big Pat. Yeah, we just saw some of the commentators uh, cheering on Pat. You know, he uh, is just one of the nicest guys in this sport, Pat Coughlin. Yeah, awesome dude. It'd be awesome to see him His at, wife is uh, so cool, too. I mean, they're just nice people. Uh, Yuta Yamamoto uh, down by one against Alexander Dambayev. That's he's he's doing really well. Yeah, and Dambayev is a pretty talented shooter. He uh, I've seen him on a number of of podiums, and you don't. I guess we don't know a whole lot about him. You know, he's uh, from the Russian Federation. Well, we saw him shoot yesterday in that mixed team round, and he did very well. Yeah, he's always been good. So uh, for Yuta to be in the match with him, that's great. You know. Uh, yeah, and good, great experience for Yuta, who is the top compound shooter in all of Japan. Um, let's see here. Jal Amas of Norway is down by one versus Chris Perkins. And that's a pretty critical match right there. Um, Jal has had some some humongous scores. He uh, he had a year, two years ago, I believe, is he qualified number one in Neem with something like a 598. Um, Chris obviously was a was the world record holder, both indoors and outdoors. So for those two to meet this early, and y'all generally rises to the occasion against, you know, the better opponents, uh, that could be a barn burner. Another top Aussie, Robert Timms, has got himself uh, a draw right now with Kawal Singh of India, 29 all. Morten Bow, the big Viking from Norway, has a two-point advantage over Roman Heffelfinger of Switzerland. I mentioned earlier Peter Elzinga had a 30. That's a three-point advantage over his opponent. Mario Cardoso of Mexico with a two-point lead over Gabriel of South Africa. And um, Victor Kalashnikov versus Leandro Rojas of Venezuela. 29 in a draw. The Wolfman is getting the short end of the stick against Albertus Cornelius. Yeah, Wolfman at a 26-28. He uh, didn't open up well that end. I'm seeing that Roberto Hernandez is also down 25-28 against uh, Federico Fagnoni. So a couple of really talented shooters with some lower scores at it. Well, let's see what happens because we're about to see an update on the scores as they're getting ready to pull the arrows. That could change. Kim Taeyun of Korea looked like he had a really good group down there, just eyeballing target number five with the naked eye. It looked solid. Let's see what happens here. By the way, I did expect um, that we would see a podium for Korean here. And yes, you predicted that back in the office. I, I still think that's the case, but I don't think it'll be a top step. Uh, for a male. Right, for a male compounder. 
So we're just waiting for the scores to roll in. I'm going to hit refresh here on the button and see what we get. Here we go. Two-point lead for Adam Ravenscroft over Kim Taeyun. So that's a big change there. Pat Larson and Julio Fierro are still tied at 57 each. Alvarez Cornelius pulled out more points on the Wolfman. What's up with that? Wolfman uncharacteristically low right now. Yep, 28. Is that what I'm seeing? Yeah, 26-27. Uh, oh, yeah, that's him. Yeah, 26-27. Yeah. That's not him. That's uh, somebody who's taken the Wolfman and replaced him with somebody who looks like him. Could be. Well, let's be fair. I mean, this is not an easy event. No. And it's uh, his first international event as a senior as well. Or he's been kidnapped under his mother's eyes. Could be. Yeah. Okay. 59-59 for Alberto Blasquez. Excuse me. Alberto Blasquez of Spain versus Mikhail Filatov of Russia. Uh, Domogoc Budin still keeping a one-point lead over Pat Rue. Martin Bow, not uh, probably not happy having given up his lead to Roman Heffelfinger. It's 53 points to 50 for Martin Bow. Peter Elzinger keeping up the pressure. He's got a uh, five-point advantage right now. We're looking at a one-point advantage for Rajat Chauhan of India. Got a two-point advantage for Kawal Singh of India. Our good friend Jorge Jimenez of El Salvador looks like he's struggling against Sebastian Hamdorf of Germany. Uh, Mr. Hamdorf has a four-point lead. Hamdorf coming off the win against PJ probably has a lot of confidence. Yep. Shooting really well right now. Yep, yep, yep. And a two-point lead for Chris Perkins. Pat Coughlin has himself a substantial lead. He's got up a six-point lead versus his opponent from the Faroe Islands. What I'm seeing here is the wind has picked up a lot. It kind of explains some of the lower scores that some of the shooters have. So you characterize what you're seeing right now as a lot of wind? I mean, uh, the wind has picked up. I'm not questioning you. I'm just looking at it, and I'm thinking to myself, eh, if I were shooting a recurve in this, that'd be okay. Maybe yeah. one, one or two rings over at the most. Yeah, it's not a lot, but what really screws with the shooter is the change feeling of the wind. Yeah, oh, yeah, I mean, as you become accustomed to one, Oh, yeah, it, look it at it that dies. flag there. I mean, the, uh, the viewers, I say look at that flag there without any regard to what the viewers can see, but you see the Copenhagen flag right there, the one in the middle? Yeah. Look what it's doing relative to the other flags. It's just swirling around yeah, out there. Yeah, it's going a different direction. And so you can feel that, right? And for these shooters, uh, you know, a steady wind that's predictable is, yep. is shootable in. But yep. as it starts to change or it picks up, you know, five or six miles an hour, that really can throw you for a loop. Don Baev is making up ground on uh, Mr. Yamamoto now. Three-point difference in favor of Mr. Don Baev. And um, Carl Henrik Giedenskold of Sweden has a two-point lead over Scott Bryce of Australia. And it looks like we're about to be on camera here. Ooh, scary. Yeah. I, uh... My, you know, I've always been told I have a face for radio. That's my line. Ah. Uh, they say, a face only my mother could love, but I don't know if she loves me anymore. <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> I hope she didn't hear that. Uh, <laughs> all right, let's see here. Oh, some people are talking about bow stuff here. Yeah, there's some bow discussion going on. This is a good, um, this is a rather good discussion. I think we've got a high level of geeks. <laughs> <laughs> you got to have, yeah, I'm one of them. I'll probably be on there later. Troop ball, uh, HBX. Yeah, some talk about Rio's uh, encouragement from Timsey. Yeah, the Aussies. Uh, I think they, I irritated they Robert him. Robert Tims. Timsey. I think I irritated him a few years ago when I um, I thought, well, yeah, I was announcing at one of the World Archery events, and I think I made a made an impertinent reference to Tim Tams, which is a wonderful Australian biscuit thing. I don't think he liked that joke. <laughs> Okay, let's see here. Competition of recurve end today. The answer to that is yes, we're into the compound rounds this afternoon. The yeah. recurves were this morning. Important to note that it's not over with yet. They will no. enter the uh, the brackets again tomorrow Ooh. and shoot from... Uh, oh. oh, no. There you go. Make sure you brush your teeth. Yeah. Yeah. 
think you got something there from lunch. Yeah, some so, so this is uh, this is what we have here, by the way. Um, no, we're off camera. We're out probably for the best. I was about to show what Juan Carlos was trying to give us, but that's okay. I think these are better, though. These right here. You know. Director has no sympathy for us. He's not going to show it. <laughs> Let me uh, zip down those scores once again. The scoring system is working awesome here, George. Oh, yeah. It's coming through really quick. Hey, I'll tell you what, these Ian Sale guys that are putting the scores together are sharp, sharp, sharp. I've worked with them for years now. These, these guys, they can write code on the fly so that when something goes wrong or, or you need something different, like they, they created something in like 18 minutes for me a few years ago called Speaker View. Right, so I have my iPad, and I can, I can look at certain things a certain way because they wrote this piece of software. Matteo, Isiani, wrote a piece of software while we're sitting outdoors in Thailand at the Asian Grand Prix, and it's what everybody uses now. And he just boom wrote it. It's like something out of the Matrix. He's amazing. Yeah, it's incredible. You know, shooters' individual target scores will update on, on our uh, screen here and we'll, we're able to see them as soon as the shooter pushes enter on the on the tablet yeah some of you who may be uh, watching and listening have probably met Matteo if you've been to a major event or even the Vegas shoot he's the Italian running around with his hair on fire all the time constantly all right so Stefan Hansen is up four right now it's not as bad as it could have been for no. Mr. Wiener. Yeah, for giving up, uh, for shooting 26 the first end, he's he's held steady since. Adam Ravenscroft is looking to deny Kim Tae-Woon a path to the podium. Yeah, and Ravenscroft's a, a great shooter in his own right. He, uh, at the 2013 World Championships, ranked second in qualification behind Jesse Broadwater. Um, so he's no slouch, obviously. If you can shoot 7-10 plus, you can throw down great head-to-head -head scores in any given match. How much you want to bet that uh, he's feeling right at home with this weather? Uh, from GBR, yeah, he's yeah. probably 100% accustomed to this. Wolfman's still in trouble. Yeah, Wolfman, we may be seeing the end of him at uh, Denmark 2015. Maybe, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Albertus Cornelius showed up with a silver bullet against the Wolfman, maybe. Well, let's see. We'll see what happens. There's and a top-level name. Yet. Absolutely. Classy name, Albertus yes. Cornelius. Should be Sounds on the like cover he should have been like a, a, a Roman senator with a name like yes. that, you know. Viktor Klashnikov, a name of a different class. Definitely get some cool points for a name like that. Uh, he has a five point lead right now. We've got a draw between Gabriel and uh, Mario. And watching our other wolf game here, he looks like he has a. 29 with one that's really close. I, I don't think he's going to get it. Let's throw an eyeball on that. But for you. he's uh, he's holding pace with Stefan. So that first end jitters kind of got him. But since then I'm he's thinking he. I, hold on, this is really tough to see because of the angle. I'm going to hold off answering that one because the spotter very correctly is calling that out with a nine asterisk, mm -hmm. and the judge will have to look at that. Yeah. There's too much arrow between me and the target. <laughs> Yeah, but since the uh, first end, Wolfgang's held held his own against Stefan. Pat Rue has turned it around against Domagoch Budin. He's up by one. And Roman Hefelfinger is up by three. He's turned it around versus Morton Bow. Three-point lead for Peter Elzinga. It's rather telling that there are no perfect scores. There are no 90s out there. No. Wouldn't expect to see one. No. I wouldn't expect to see a 148 finish here either. It's probably going to be, you, you may have a 147 out there. Chris Perkins up by two. One of the bigger gaps is that enjoyed by big Pat Coughlin. He is up by six right now for Pat. Cruising. Amir Kazim for of Iran has a healthy lead. Deep Martrillis and Daryl Wilson in a, a tight battle with Deep Martrillis. Yeah, Deep Martrillis up by one. So let's see what happens as they start to score this end right here with one to go. Three arrows to go, 12 arrows down range. Good afternoon, everyone. If you're in the European time zone, I'm George Tekmachov here with Steve the Big Cat Anderson with one S. And what's up? Hey, we're. <laughs> 
I was leaned out of the camera there. I'm I don't sorry. even know where the camera is. No, oh, there it is. It's right here. Yeah. All right. So, oh, this is this is what we got from Juan Carlos. Oh, uh, see, uh, see, see. He oh, bounces. So. Oh, Here's we what go. we got from Juan Carlos. See, we can't eat it because we're on the air. But this is what I got from my friend from the Tokyo Olympic Organizing Committee. These are really good. They're not bad. They're Just really me. good. It's uh, it's a different texture than candy that I'm used to. You know, millions of Japanese school children can't be wrong. Safety in numbers. It's a uh, it's a manju. You know, it's got it's healthy, by the way. It's rice and beans, basically. I'm sure I'm just a few of them away from having six pack abs. Absolutely, just like mine. All right. Here comes uh I don't even want to know what some of those comments mean. <laughs> Fink08 says hi. Hello. Hello. Thanks for being here. Oh, dear. Who are those two? That can't be the, good. The comments are just blowing up right now. I'm getting asked to uh, see many of the OK archery bows. I think there's one out there. I, I think we're looking at Wolfgang shooting I've the only one. I've seen one in my entire archery career. Yeah. I All see right. him here and there. Uh, yeah, Wolfgang has one. Oh, that's, does he? That's there the only go. OK archery bow I've seen on the field. Yeah, they're OK. Yeah, the uh, ones I've seen and from shooters who I know have, who have tried them, um, they say I, great I love this comment right here. They sponsor a lot of local archers, but apparently can't match the big money that Hoyt, PSC, and Matthews offers international pros. I can count the number of guys actually getting paid by those three companies on both, both my hands here at this event. It's, yeah, it's, it's, it the, irritates me. The perception People of, think that archers are bought and they're not. Yeah, the perception of... Uh, uh, consumers that that big pros are, are have these huge yeah, contracts. Yeah. I mean, <clears throat> I wish I, they I, did. By the way, I wish they did. Oh, I, I would wish love our to. sport were like golf, where you could make a hundred thousand dollars a year if you're number one hundred. Yeah, I mean, I I, wish I've had a lot of success, and you know, I carry a top fifteen world ranking, and and you work. For I work life. for a living. Yeah, I show up to work every day. Uh, thankfully, I work for a company who allows me to to do what I do, and and I'm able to. Now work at events like this and, and also shoot participate in events that I'm on the team for. I, I know but exactly uh, five people who are in this sport who can afford to only shoot. Yeah, that's, right? it's very, very, very small. Number. I mean, we're talking five people here. Yeah. So, I, you know, personally, that's my bugaboo. I, I really, it bugs me because I know the truth. Right. But you don't want to, you know, get on these archery forums and start complaining back at these people who make this stuff up because, you know, if you argue with a pig, he just kind of drags you down and beats you with experience. Right. It's, it's just irritating. Uh, a lot of misconceptions in the sport. And <clears throat> having worked in in uh, a major bow manufacturer and now for a major arrow manufacturer, I, I am lucky to understand a lot of the business side of archery and and see it as a, as a shooter as well and a consumer. I mean, I don't have things handed to me. I still go to LancasterArchery.com and, and buy things. And, and uh, there's a lot of misconceptions out there. Yeah. Anyway. Now here's a promise that I'm gonna I'm gonna probably actually get fulfilled. That's a buddy of mine from Japan, Phil, Phil Nall, yep. who uh, who among many other things works for Shibuya Archery. Yep. Shout out to Phil. And I. Do you know he was just in San Diego? He's he's a comic. San Diego uh, Comic Con. He just he just printed his own comic. Yeah. Uh, I mean he's gonna be the next uh, Iron Man author or something. I yeah. think. Phil Phil uh, is is very true to himself. Super genuine guy. He's. From Austria, I believe. Pretty solid shooter. Yeah. He used to uh, be a recurve shooter. You know, he used to be on the side of good and right. Yeah. Now, oh, wait, did the, I uh, say that out loud? Ah, uh, you did. We won't hold it against you. But he took we're, the dark we're, side. We're path. accustomed to people lobbing Phil, them from the Phil, cheap seats. Phil is used to it. Phil took the path to the dark side years ago. Oh, there's Ryan Ty. Even Ryan have jumped Tyak. on the Caffeine fudge. I had some, by the way. I had some of Ryan's famous caffeine fudge. It all went away. You know. It was fantastic, as usual, by the way. Now, Phil, 
is doing a good job explaining the uh, Olympic qualifying thing for those of you looking for. Here's a great question from Jossie, Joshi Mitsu. GT and Steve, what do you think needs to happen to get compound into the Olympics? I, I, I have my set of answers. Let's hear yours, Steve. Well, I'm not as uh, in tune with the IOC as you are, George, the International Olympic Committee. Um, I, I, will it happen? Maybe eventually. I mean, there's been some pretty bizarre sports. I used to race BMX when I was nine years old, and now BMX is an Olympic sport. I never would have thought that. Mm. Uh, compound archery sure seems like a, a great candidate. And having been to the World Games, which is basically a, uh, a, sh a showcase of non-Olympic sports put on by the International Olympic Committee, I've seen some of the other ones that they do there. Tug of war, water skiing, some, some cool stuff, you know, some interesting stuff and unique stuff in its own right. Uh, where archery is already involved in the Olympics, maybe we'll see compounds make their way in. I, I don't know that the 50-meter game is the one to do it. Who knows? Maybe it's field archery, something a little different. You have a couple different types of equestrian and cycling. You have mountain biking and, and uh, the uh, road cycling and, the, and in the, the velodrome, I believe. So right. maybe maybe it's a completely different venue of archery. But well, You and I have both shot in the World Games. Yeah. And in the World Games, it's field archery. Uh, until 2013, it was 50 meters, which yeah. I, I did shoot in that. So I, I would prefer something maybe vastly different from what we're shooting now as an approach to the Olympic archery for compounds. But I, I don't know. I don't know what they're looking for. I don't know that they're looking at all. Um, George, you probably have a better idea of how Olympic sports are selected. Well, first of all, it's really tough to be on the outside looking in as an Olympic sport, and that's why it was so important that Jim Easton was able to make the changes that were needed to our sport, and then that was carried forth by our current president, or Erdner, as part of the Olympic plan to create the situation that we have now where we are a core sport. But what we don't want to do is give up half our Olympic slots just to be able to bring in compound. That's right. what, you know, that's that that wouldn't go over very well. There's I don't a limited think. number of athletes yeah, at the Olympics. Yeah. yeah. And as a result, 128, you've got a situation where what we want is to gradually expand our presence in the Olympic program First, perhaps by, and by the way, I speak not in any official capacity. This is opinion based on my acquaintance with this subject and discussions I've had with some people who are much better dialed in. But the first step is to try to do something for the mixed team round, because the mixed team round is really a great path toward gender equality. It is universality. That means that it's, it's available to everyone. And it provides for a new category that shows men and women working together to the common goal, putting arrows in the ten ring. Yeah, there's not a whole lot of co-ed sports in the Summer Olympic Games. That's right, and this is one pot potential. And certainly the IOC had an opportunity to look at that. My understanding is that I may be speaking out of school here a little bit, may have Tom Dillon firing me a little while. But the, the hope was it would be ready for Rio. But Rio was complicated, you know, getting everything ready. And so they chose to keep the program the way it was. And my current understanding is that there will be an effort directed toward getting it into the 2020 games. I hope to see it there. That'd be great to see compound, or excuse me, recurve mixed well, teams. It's, it's more medals. Yeah. For a lot of countries that can't have full teams. It gives don't have full teams. So that's where the universality comes into play. You're going to see medals from countries in Africa, for example, that aren't strong enough to have a full team, but may have a strong man and a strong woman. Yeah, they can't put together three that can that can win, but they have a couple of individuals who, exactly. are, who are good exactly. shooters. You know, you know uh, I just saw in the comments, Sarah Bernstein, the media director from USA Archery, just posted that they have a, a great article on this in an interview with Tom Dillon, the Secretary General of World Archery, oh, good. on the USA Archery website, so you can check that out and read that, and it uh, explains a lot, she says, with an emoji behind it. And that's uh, U-S-A-R-C-H-E-R-Y dot O-R-G. I would consult the Google and yeah. just type in USA Archery. USA Archery, and it'll come up. Yep. Yeah. Because I'd never remember if it's USA Archery or U.S. Archery. I, I don't even know. I, I, I Google both. everything. I bet they both work. I don't use Google anymore. So we've got a couple one-arrow shoot-offs on the field here. Hi, Lottie. Uh, you all right? I'm looking at maybe Robert Timms down there. It's a looks like an Australian. I could be mistaken. And they're both low nines. 
The see one on the can, left is closer to center, target number nine. See if we can get an update on some scores here. Pull it up Roberto, right here. Roberto Hernandez in a shoot-off. Okay, that's target nine that I was just looking at. It looks like it's victory for Roberto Hernandez. Looks like Roberto has made it. Awesome. The best man. Yeah, for for your wedding purposes, yes. Yes. Speaking of which, I, uh, I received a, a text request from my wife saying that you should say, by the way, I love my life, Winda. Ha, 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 I'm joking. <laughs> you she said I should say, ha, 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 I'm joking. Oh, why would that be? Uh, She's obviously looking for attention. You better give it to her. You're going to be in <laughs> trouble later. Yeah, well, she shot well today, and she's through to tomorrow, so all should be well on the home front. Glad to hear that. Okay, so as soon as we uh, get the system giving us our numbers, uh, one final update. Just waiting for those to dial in. Looks like victory for Rajat Chauhan of India. So, here's who made it. It is Stefan Hansen moving forward. He'll next meet Adam Ravenscroft. And Pat Larson advances. He'll meet Albertus Cornelius of South Africa, who beat the Wolfman by one point. Gabriel Badenhorst will advance. Uh, Ruben Blandahl advances. It's uh, Mikhail Filatov advancing. Victory for Patrick Rue by one point over Domagoj Budin of Croatia. One point victory for Roman Haffelfinger of Switzerland. So there will be dancing in the halls in the hotel tonight. Victory for Peter Elzinga. Victory for Rajat Chahan of India. Victory for Robert Timms of Australia. Victory for Jorge Jimenez of El Salvador, the two-time World Cup champion. Victory for Chris Perkins of Canada, the world champion. Victory for Pat Coughlin of Australia. Oi, oi, oi. Victory for Nelson Torres of Venezuela. Victory for Amir Kazimpur of Iran. Victory for Dietmar Trillis, the 2007 world champion from Canada. Victory for Andres Cardona of Colombia. Victory for Alexander Dambayev of Russian Federation. For Daniel Munoz of Colombia. So congratulations to everyone who's made it. Condolences to those of you who have not. We appreciate you having joined us this afternoon. I'm George Tekmanchov, and for Steve the Big Cat Anderson, we wish you a good evening. We'll see you again tomorrow.